I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't like doing top 10 lists. I don't like doing best of, worst of, things of that nature. I do them because people enjoy them, but a part of me feels dirty afterwards, a little bit more dead inside because I know I don't see every single movie that comes out a year. I know there's always gonna be that one gem that got away from me that should be on my top 10 best of or worst stuff for that matter. Why am I bringing this up in an unrelated video? Oh, it's related. It's related. Let's talk Babylon. I came out with a video recently speculating on why Babylon bombed and why I hadn't yet seen it. And it was entirely because it's three hours long. There was other movies out at the time and I just didn't want to invest it. Even though Damien Chazelle has knocked it out of the park every single time for me with Whiplash, La La Land, and First Man. So it's a no brainer. I have to see this, right? Well, Patreon user Scott Sullivan made damn sure I went out and saw it as he became a Mithril member over at patreon.com slash Adam Does Movies. At that tier, you get to request a movie. I have to review it and tip my hat to you. And in this case, Scott, I definitely tip my hat because Babylon. Yeah, he did it again. Damien has done it again. This fucking movie has already made my top 10 best movies of the year list irrelevant. And it just came out like a day ago. So sorry, Glass Onion, you're no longer on my top 10 for the year. And to be honest, you felt a little out of place. That was the only one I was thinking, there's gotta be something better to go here. It's Babylon. Babylon is a fantastic movie from beginning to end. It's full of wow moments. It's full of phenomenal acting. You have Brad Pitt in this. You have Margot Robbie freaking dominating the screen. I don't know why there's suddenly Margot Robbie haters in the world. Like she's box office poison or she's unlikable now in interviews. Who's listening to actors in interviews anyways? Why have we suddenly gotten to a point where we're like, Actors are idiots. We should listen to them or put them on a pedestal. Yeah, no shit. They're just like real people because they are. They just make way more money and have a camera in front of them. They still say the same dumb crap that your neighbor does. Just don't pay them attention. Appreciate the craft they're putting out. Musicians are no different. Artists of any kind, scientists, doctors, mathematicians, they're all people at the end of the day that are just really good at their profession. Let's appreciate them for that and leave all the other stuff to the sideline. So Margot Robbie kills it in Babylon. Brad Pitt's solid too. He doesn't have to do as much work uh, in that department, but he is choice here. I say choice now because it's uh, 1992 again. Subscribe for throwback terms. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's back this train up. This is going to be spoiler free because only like eight people have seen Babylon. Um, if you're not one of those eight, Run out and watch it. If you are a fan of film, you have to see Babylon. You owe it to yourself. You already watched the stupid Avatar 2 movie that's taken up all the box office receipts while Babylon's just sitting there crying in the corner with his ball. Here's the thing, folks. And I, I've been getting some crap on this because I didn't like Avatar 2, even though I really respect James Cameron, love his entire body of work outside of one freaking film. Um, so I guess I'm a hater and I want it to fail. I don't want Avatar 2 two to fail. When I came out with my box office prediction video, I was worried it would. Uh, clearly I was proven wrong. James Cameron will always be gold. There's, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Even if the marketplace seems like it's not there anymore, it's there. When it comes to the Avatar franchise, it's clear the foreign markets love this shit. But here's the harsh reality. A lot of people that go to see movies like Avatar, including myself, only go to one or two movies a year. A large, audience, a large section of people only see a couple movies a year at theaters. And so they want them to be big. They want them to be loud. They want them to be over the top rides, huge experiences that only the theater will provide. You can't get it at home. And so I totally get it. And I don't knock those people. I'm not into sporting events. I might go to one every couple of years. It's the same thing. There's diehards there. They look at guys like me and they're like, you don't belong here. You don't even know half the players names. Just like moviegoers, you don't even know who directed this. You don't even know the cast. That's okay. But Babylon has a problem because the movie was incredibly expensive to make. It has a very limited audience and those are mainly people that freaking love movies. Not just go to movies on a regular basis. I'm talking like bleed movies. They know the directors. They know all the actors. They know the filmography. They know how much the budget is. They know when it releases. 
I mean, th this is the kind of shit that you need to know watching Babylon. Otherwise, you don't even know this movie came out like most people because the marketing was atrocious. So what's Babylon about? Well, it's about old timey Hollywood. The 1920s, 1926, I believe it starts, and it spans throughout that decade. Uh, we get to see the people, the up and comers, and those that are on their way out. Damien Chazelle has a ball here though. This isn't just like some stock retelling of some magical time period, the golden era of cinema. No, 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 no. This is like if some conspiracy theorists on Facebook and QAnon wrote the script for this film. There's debauchery, there's demonistic shit, there's people wearing masks and banging each other, there's coke blowing constantly, there's elephants shitting on people, there's vomiting, there's peeing. I mean, it's like every disgusting, depraved thing you can think of is on the screen. And it is a wild time, baby. It's like if the Wolf of Wall Street and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood had a crack baby. This is the product. This movie is funny too. It's like one of the funnier comedies I've seen in a long time, but it's also a drama. But it's also a horror movie at some points. In fact, it's scarier than pretty much anything I've seen this year in one section of the film. I was like, whoa, what? We took a turn. We took a big turn here. Lots of layer in this movie, lots of commentary. Margot Robbie's character, for instance, plays Nelly. She's a star in her own eyes, and she's gonna make damn sure it becomes a reality for the rest of the fools out there. She has a horrible childhood. We get a little bit of that with backstory, not much. It's focused mainly on the present. In the meantime, you have Brad Pitt as Jack Conrad. He's been in the game forever. He's an old dog. He's still at the top. He's still on his prime, but how much longer can he hold on to that success, especially when talkies are coming into play. Those are moving pictures with sound. No more holding up cards. Now, now you have to act on an entirely different level with a lot of different awful circumstances to overcome. There is like a 30 minute dedicated sequence in this movie that is hilarious. And it's all about how they're shooting one of the first pictures with sound and all the obstacles they have to overcome. I was laughing my ass off at the absurdity as the thing keeps on ratcheting up. And there are several moments throughout the movie like that where all these events are just cascading on top of each other. People are running this way and that like chickens with their heads cut off and they're just trying to get the damn shot. They're dealing with drunk actors. They're dealing with camera equipment being destroyed. They're dealing with their own egos getting in the way. But on top of all of the deplorable acts, the degradation of Hollywood, the extreme one-upsmanship Damien's clearly putting on display here to counter movies like Wolf of Wall Street, there is touching moments in this. There's some great commentary here like, look, these people are flawed. There's nothing that special about them off camera. In fact, their lives are kind of shitty. They're just like you and I. But when they get in front of that camera, when they read those lives, when they transport to a different location and time and person entirely, they're alive. They're building something great here. And it's not just for them, although that means a lot. It's for the entire world to witness, or at least those that plop down the 50 cents to go see the picture. 50 cents, can you imagine? Now it's like 8.50 for a soda. Times have changed, haven't they? Mm. But that's also what this movie's about, how times have changed, how cinema's maybe not quite as wondrous as it used to be, but there's still magic there. There always has been, there always will be. There are people in the industry that truly believe in what they're doing. Now, some people were saying in the comments, I don't wanna see another movie about Hollywood being great and movies being magical and special and there's gonna be a bunch of masturbatory nonsense about look at us, aren't we the best? Eh, there's like a little bit of that, but for the most part, it's, it's making fun of it all. It's removing some of the concealer and letting you see the rashy underbelly and it's going to such an extreme with things that you can't help but sit back and enjoy the ride. And you can sit back and say, damn, it's too bad I'm the only one in the theater watching this movie because it is so worth your time. Three hours is a lot to ask for people, especially in this day and age. Believe me, I know, it scared me away and I love all of his previous movies, but I'm so thankful I went. Once again, I appreciate you Patreon user Scott Sullivan and all Patreons and YouTube join members and anyone who helped me out in the channel over this year or over any year, really. Uh, it's a passion project, much like you see movies like Babylon. Yeah, they cost a lot. Yeah, they, um, they have a very specific audience, but that audience needs to get out there and watch it. 
And if we don't do that, well then guess what? Hocus Pocus 3 will probably be on Disney Plus in a year or so. Enchanted 3 is right around the corner. Like, is this what we want? Is this really what we want? Go see Babylon. Do yourself a favor. And do me the favor of subscribing to the channel, Adam Does Movies. I post tons of movie content each and every week. I would love to have you stick around. Like the video if you had a good time. And make sure to tell your friends that we gotta keep growing this thing. I, I wanna keep it going as well. Much like Hollywood. Take care. Thanks again for watching the video. I mentioned Patreon, I mentioned you can be a YouTube Join member. I also have a second channel I'm just starting to build up called Adam After Dark. Just, just skit-based humor, very silly, very light. Uh, it's on a second channel, just started, so I'd love to have you subscribe there. I'm also on Spotify and other like podcast music things, I guess, uh, with my buddy DJ Bless. We do a podcast called Movies With My Black Friend. We have three episodes up. It's a lot of fun, longer format, so if you want something more than nine or 10 minutes, that's the place to get it.